So it's my 30th birthday this week, which is crazy, but I have been through a lot and learned a lot in those years. So here are the 30 realistic, maybe possibly controversial life lessons that I have learned in 30 years. Hey guys, what's up? If you're new here, my name is Jills and I help women step into their power and become their best self. So if that's something that you wanna do, you should absolutely hit that red subscribe button below and join this lovely corner of the internet. So yeah, let's get into those life lessons because 30 is a lot. So number one, be careful who you take advice from. My general rule is don't take advice from people whose lives you don't aspire to. Even though people usually have very good intentions, it doesn't mean that they necessarily know what's best for you or have the right knowledge to help you. So use your discernment. Number two, you cannot force someone to change. You can't force someone to grow. You can't force someone to heal. You can't force someone to change their behavior. It's totally and completely up to them and you can encourage them and you can be a good example, but it's up to them. So don't put energy into forcing it or trying to control it because you have to let people live their own lives. Even if you don't agree with it or if you see that they're suffering because of it. Again, it's not your job because the drive to change, it comes from within. It's not from from anyone else. Number three, nobody knows what they're doing. 99.9% .9 of the time, people are just winging it in life. We think everyone, or at least I thought this way when I was younger, that everyone is smarter than us or everyone has everything figured out. But the thing that I realized is that they don't. Everyone's just figuring it out as they go. And it's okay for you to figure things out as you go too. Number four, don't ever chase a man because even if you catch him, the relationship will likely have the wrong dynamic. You will probably feel sort of insecure or unsatisfied in that relationship. So let him come to you, let him pursue pursue you because trust me, it'll be a better relationship in the long run. And with that said, number five, if a guy likes you, then you will know. If you're questioning it, then you probably already have the answer. You just don't want to admit it to yourself. It's really not very complicated. If a guy likes you, he will be regularly trying to communicate with you and trying to spend time with you. Wait for the one who truly likes you for you and stop wasting time on guys who put in very little effort. Focus on yourself instead. So number six, when you don't know what to do or you have a choice between two different things and you don't know what choice to make, sometimes the best thing is to just pick something and move on. Sometimes we get analysis paralysis where we get paralyzed to make a decision because we don't want to make the wrong decision. But the worst thing to do is just live in that in between and never make any decision. Even if you realize later on that it wasn't for you, now you know. And sometimes you need that experience to gain the clarity of what you do want. And you can always re-choose, re-decide, or change course at any time. Nothing is ever permanent. And number seven, if you can, spend the extra money and buy a cordless vacuum instead of the regular ones. They're a thousand percent worth it. Eight, don't take anything too personally. Most people speak from a place of pain or hurt and they're just projecting their wounds onto you. So don't dwell on them because there's just really no point. Number nine, this is a good one. In general, people love to talk about themselves. So if you're trying to get on someone's good side or trying to start a conversation with someone new, just ask them about themselves and listen to their answers and have genuine follow-up questions. Let them talk about themselves and you will likely make a very good impression because it'll make them feel really good. And this is just a really easy way to make conversation. Number 10, not everyone might agree with this, but you can't do it all at least not all at once. You have to pick and choose and prioritize what really matters to you. The reality is, is that you cannot put 100% of your effort into your family and 100% into your health and 100% into your career and your home and your looks, etc. That's just impossible. You will burn yourself out in the process and likely get really upset for yourself for not reaching those unrealistic standards that you set. Instead, be clear on your priorities and focus on that. Because when you try to do everything, you usually end up doing nothing. And by the way, you usually don't need it all to be happy and fulfilled. You just need the right things for you. Number 11, stop complaining so much. Seriously, positivity is more productive than negativity and good things happen to happy people. Doesn't mean you shouldn't ever express anger or sadness or you shouldn't ever feel anger and sadness, of course, but those should be temporary emotions. You shouldn't be living in them. Sometimes physical issues in the body can be caused by emotional imbalances. I'm a big believer that emotional imbalances can actually affect our physical health in small or huge ways. And I have personally healed physical issues by healing the underlying 
emotional distress that sat beneath that. So the energetic part of you, it exists and it is just as important as the physical. 13, if your home is messy, your mind is messy. And there's a very strong chance that if your place is messy and it's not well taken care of, then your mental health will suffer to some extent. And I think it will vary person to person, but at least to some extent. So take care of your home. 14, love is more than just a feeling. It's a conscious choice. In a long-term relationship, you both have to choose each other over and over again and prioritize that connection because once you've been together for years and years and then you throw life stress into that mix love isn't always this natural feeling that's always there no matter what it's also something that you have to consciously support and focus on number 15 figure out your strengths and use them because here's the thing that most people don't realize it's been shown that we can dramatically improve our strengths but our weaknesses don't really end up improving that much even if we try really hard. Your strengths are there for a reason and they're meant to be a guide for you and your whole life gets a lot easier when you can really learn how to utilize them. Everyone has certain strengths, you just have to figure out what they are and if you have no idea, ask a close family member or friend. And number 16, over my 30 years of life, I have come to the conclusion that for the most part, the world we live in today is not supportive of the human spirit. So many people have the same routine. They wake up, they work inside at a job they dislike. They eat and then they sleep and they repeat the whole thing over and over again until they retire. And that's not the way we're meant to live. And although it's uncommon and not necessarily easy, it is so important that you try to create a life that you don't need to escape from. So many people are counting down the days until their next vacation day at work, or they're binging on sweets at night because there's no sweetness in their life. All I'm saying is that it's worth it to put in the effort to do things differently sometimes to create a life that you truly love. Number 17, growth and healing is not always linear. Sometimes you have to take one step backward to take two steps forward and that's just the way that it works. So whenever you face a little setback, that's okay. Just remember that you're playing the long game and you will get there eventually. Number 18, women are not small men. The scientific truth is that there are various physiological differences between men and women. And most scientific studies are normally done on either men or postmenopausal women, but not women in our reproductive years, not women who are having a cycle because it makes the science difficult. Because their hormones are changing so much. But anyways, the point being is that your hormones, your body, your mind, even your spirit, it requires different things to feel healthy and happy and fulfilled in life. It does not mean that we are weaker than by any means, it means that we are different. And you can either resist these differences or see the beauty in it. But I promise you that you will be a much happier person if you choose to see the beauty and specialness in that. Number 19, speaking of these differences, a woman's body is meant for fertility. Now, that does not mean that you have to utilize it. That does not mean that you have to have kids. Of course not, that's totally up to you. But understanding that this is your body's main focus, whether you decide to utilize it or not, is a game changer. The way that we become healthier and feel our best as women is the same exact way that we support our fertility. If your hormones are out of balance and you wanna fix that, instead of asking yourself, how do I balance my hormones? Ask yourself, how do I support my fertility? What would I do right now if if I wanted to have a kid really soon. You would eat nutritious food and make sure you're eating enough. You would work out, but not too much, not too aggressively. You would try to reduce your stress, get extra rest and sleep. And you would try to make sure that you are ovulating regularly and having a good healthy cycle. We have to work with our body, not against it. And we have to lean into the way our body naturally works instead of resisting it. And that's how we thrive. And number 20, the way you say something is usually more important than what you say. Your tone and your body language matter and they can communicate a lot. So be conscious of that. Number 21, dogs make everything better. 22, to every choice you make, there's always gonna be some sort of sacrifice. There's always gonna be some sort of opportunity cost. For example, if you go to the gym after work, then you can't go to dinner with your friends that night. Or if you choose to be an entrepreneur and start your own business, then you can't have the stability and the normal paycheck of a nine to five job. Choose your sacrifices carefully and get clear on what you're willing to sacrifice for. This will help you to make better decisions in life. Number 23, sometimes failures or things not working out the way you want them to are really just the universe redirecting you to something better 
and moving you closer to where you're supposed to go. So trust where you're being led. And with that said, number 24, stop trying to control everything because this creates the opportunity for things to work out even better than you could have ever imagined. And controlling things takes that away. Trust that you are meant to live an incredible life and it will come. 25, people can treat you differently based off of how you look, how you dress, and how you present yourself, especially as a woman. That's just the reality. And if people treat you better, life can be easier and more enjoyable. So take care of yourself and present yourself in your best light. And this is gonna make you feel good too. So there's no harm in not doing this. Number 26, if a friend talks bad about you to other people and they're not like your ride or die BFF, then they are likely doing that same thing about you to other friends. Of course, it doesn't automatically make them a bad person, but it is something to be conscious of and aware of, especially in regards to what you choose to share with that person. Number 27, not everyone is going to appreciate who you are and see your worth but find the ones that do because I promise you that they are out there. Number 28, money cannot make you happy in and of itself, but, but it can definitely help up to a certain point because it can give you security and opportunity, both of which are very important. And it is not a bad thing to want wealth as long as you approach it from the right energy and the right mindset. I mean, it can absolutely improve the quality of your life. It will not solve all your problems. It will not just magically make you the happiest person on the earth, but it will help. 29, instead of thinking about the worst possible outcome all the time, don't forget to also think about the best possible outcome too. It can help alleviate a lot of anxiety and encourage you to take some healthy risks sometimes. And last but not least, number 30, if a guy is constantly posting himself on social media, is constantly on social media, and it's not for like his work or some sort of education platform, then that is a major red flag and you should run. That is it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to know. And if you have any crucial life lessons that you have learned, please share them below. I think that we could all really benefit from them. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you around. Bye.